Hello guys, uh, my name is Gustavo, you can call me Gus. This is gonna be like my second talk ever, so if I am shaking, nervous, just bear with me, okay? So, today I'm just gonna uh, talk about like bootstrapping two objects. I call it this way, uh, what's your name again, sir? Michael told me no, that is, is also called primitive obsession, right? So one of the main reasons what I wanted to talk about this is based on my experience, I have seen people just uh, just bootstrapping, like uh, creating the, this logic. If they want to do some calculations, some math, this developer will just like kind of write some code here, they write the same code here, and they're gonna have an file here, and they're gonna have the same code here. So what it happened is like when you have your logic all spread out, out of the water in every file, mm -hmm. it's really difficult to tackle and really difficult to understand. So this is like the main reason why I, I wanted to talk to you about this. So uh, one of a little bit why, why this is bad is this is a code smell. Uh, in computer programming design smell is an structure the design that indicates violation of fundamental design principles and negatively impacting design quality. Why is this is bad, right? So as I was telling you, it's like having a bad design in your early process or in your early developer is gonna seriously hurt you at the end of the road. So it's pretty important for you like when you are creating this code, just to understand if, if certain piece of code is, is just grabbing behavior, you just need to like, the, my, my best suggestion for you is just grab a paper and see what is the behavior that this code is taking, what is the course that this code is taking, and just give it a name. Give it a name, new an object, and just encapsulate this logic there. Because the, the problem is like, if you don't do it early, and you have this logic all around the place, when you need to talk, tackle it and to the factory, it's gonna be a really pain in the butt. So it's really important for you to just to try to understand or try to visualize those problems at the early stage. Or if, if you, you come across the, 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 the situation when you are debugging this code and you see, okay, you have this logic here, like let's say you are just con uh, querying the, the, the user information, like some address, and you need to do some, some, some calculation with the address. You need to, to send an email or whatever. So if let's say that you have three endpoints, like see, uh, see the user, you update the user, or update the user, and you have this logic in all these three places, like the problem is like when your business logic changes, you will have to go and you will really need to know where this logic is so you can tackle it properly. And the chances that you miss some validation and you have a, a, a difference between your code in these three places is really high. So it's really important for you to try to, to tackle this information and just to encapsulate it in the proper object and just give it a name. So that's the reason why this is bad. So. A little bit about the primitive smell. You can see like use of primitives instead of the small objects for simple tasks, such as currency, ranges, special stream for fun, etc. You know, like for example, when this 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 was me right in 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 my early stage, uh, I used to just to have a function. Uh, this function used to return an array, and I used to return everything out of that array. So the problem with that array is that you, you, you don't have this, this data consistency. So you don't have, like, you are not certain about what information you are getting from this function, and you are not certain about what information you are persisting to your database. So this is, that, that is why it's important if you are gonna, for example, handle currency, like let's say you are selling, I don't know, let's say your uh, SP group bills, right? You need to pay your bill online. So if these people, they, they handle their code and they just treat this code as a float or as a, a primitive object in, the, in, their, in their code base, the chances that they are gonna have a problem in the future is really high. It's better to have this currency encapsulated in an object so this object can take different behaviors. Let's say that SP Groups opens a, a, a new office in, in Indonesia. So in Indonesia, they are uh, working on, uh, I, uh, I think, Malay, Rupians or something, I don't know what the name is. So the issue is like treating this object, treating this currency here is really different from treating this currency in HDD or USD. So the, 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 the aim or the, the purpose of encapsulating this information in objects is like these objects will have behavior and they will attract behavior. 
So if you have this information separated from your business logic, your business logic can work smoothly and the occurrences can be a different island. So the way how they are going to know about each other is just a simple interface and you can type in a currency object and you can receive a currency object uh, type hint. So another example is for roles, uh, users. When we have users, if you are in the LS stage of your application and you just need to, to get a life or to release it, of course, you will have strings, right? Admin, super admin, employees. So the, the issue with this is like you, you, you don't have a way to control this, this uh, logic uh, down the road. When, you, like, when your application grows super big and all your logic is just spread around. So another problem that we have there, and I have seen myself a lot, is when we create these classes, these objects in PHP, and we create this constants, right? We say, OK, the role admin is equal one. So in all our code base, we are just going to call this constant admin. So we have like, we are breaking the encapsulation of these objects and exposing this information out in, in, in the outside world. So whenever you need to uh, refactor this code, or whenever you need to know about something about this code, it's going to be really difficult for you, as I said in the past, like if it's better that you have all your logic in one place and not scattered around. So some of the treatment that I have been working lately myself is uh, uh, it's better to introduce value data objects in place of primitive data. Like, for example, if you are querying your database, let's, let's piggyback in the, in the user example. Let's say you need to, to have your address information out of the users, right? So you, if you are querying with PHP, of course, you will get like a, an array. It's up to you. It's, 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 there is nothing that's going to stop you just to returning and working with this array or do it in a, in a consistent uh, way. You can just new up a data object. I usually call it like values, address value. I pass in my array, my raw adre uh, array, and I validate all, I expose the API that I want the, the, the outside world to know. Like for example, if I want to know the, the address of this user, I will have a method in this object called get address. And this get address is gonna be type hinting. So every time that when, I, when I'm getting this object, uh, with this information from this object, I am 100% certain that I am getting the right info. Okay, my voice is breaking. <laughs> Chill, okay. So, <laughs> okay, so here, by doing so, we'll encapsulate the related logic within an object, and this will allow us to have a place where to operate from. Like, this is an important, um, uh, uh, how you say, in, uh, improvement to your code base, because, like, for example, let's say that, that you have a user, again, simple, simple examples, right? The user, you will have first name as last name. But in so many cases in your application, you will go through the situation where you need a full name from this user. It's, it's up to, nobody's going to stop you to, to be in all the files and just calling first name, last name, and just make a normal concatenation there. The advantage of having these objects created is that like you can have a full name, a method there, and you can operate or, or do your, all the math that you require to, in order for this object to give you this info and you can type in the, return, the, the type. So you are guaranteeing, like, any time you, you get this object out of there, you have a valid data. So another one is, of course, it will give us the ability to clean up the, our code base since, we'll, uh, <coughs> since we will have objects representing our domain logic. Again, like, for example, uh, another <coughs> example I can give you is, is one of, uh, I work in this, uh, 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 travel company, right? We work, our main entity is, is a booking. So, but we have different bookings, we have different cell channels, we have different people who really need to, to see different information from the booking. So what it is, is like we have in these different channels, they, they handle different controllers and they use one, one contract for the booking that's gonna tell me, okay, anytime that I need to know something about the booking, there is a contract that is telling me this. But the information that this booking is going to show to these different channels is different. So therefore, I am cleaning my code outside, and I am extracting all my business logic in these objects. So everything that happened, every calculation, every math, I am going to have it here. You can unit test this code, and you are 100% sure that every time that you are, you are going to use this object outside, it's working. 
uh, what is that? Okay, so this is just related to what I was telling you. Is it's not is it's nothing that you will learn in the books or whatever the books are gonna tell you. So much crap, right? But uh, my suggestion is just just try to write in a paper the process that you have. It's like let's see, you are working in this controller. Uh, just imagine Lazada, right? We have Lazada, and they they have these orders. Anytime you place an order, there is there is an event in this application, right? This application needs to create an order, needs to send an email, and, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you just need to go through this process and see what is your logic and how your logic is being bootstrapped, and try to see what is the objects that are being created by, by seeing those lines, those repetition. Let the repetition of your code tell you, uh, tell you what domains and what objects you need. Just don't go uh, like straight out, like, okay, yes, I need an object for this, no. Allow yourself to have like crappy code. See it, read it, and from there you will see what is what are the objects that are required in order for you to claim that uh, particular code. One few examples I have here. I think uh, this is the one that I was telling you about. Let's see. We have this a small class. Usually, uh, when I work with uh, value objects, I declare my objects like final, so nobody is gonna extend this these objects because the main purpose of them is just to be data holders. So you, s you really know that what you are calling from there is the information that you need. So let's see, as I was telling you, I usually, this is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's not the best practice to go about it, but I usually pass in an array and I build my data object here. So because this is a simple uh, uh, object, I mean, I didn't do it like super, super, super secure, but you can, you can work, there is something called like, is defenses programming, right? What I have is, like I was telling you, some, some of my examples that I have been doing in this booking uh, value objects is like, if I need to show a booking for this customer, this booking needs to show this info, right? Let's see that the, the booking needs to show, let's see that we need to show a customer, right? And the customer, to, for, in order for me to show this customer in my application, they need to have a name and last name. So what I'm gonna have here in my constructor is gonna have, I'm gonna have a validate method that's gonna check whether the data that is, 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 is coming through is valid. So if it's not valid, I throw an exception. So whatever happens after my constructor is valid data. So this is how I build my objects. I, how I was telling you I was, you can have a name, you can type in the, 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 the return information and you, are, you really know that the data that you are getting there is valid. How I knew this object, it's just simple, just pass an array. And a uh, simple uh, uh, example, as I was telling you about, is the full name, just, just, you can have it here. Now you have, uh, if some of you have worked with Laravel, uh, you might see this behavior being driven in, in, the, in the models. But uh, yes, that's pretty much, this is an example. So, uh, okay. So what I was, this is an example about like, you can have these objects in order for you to take information from the outside work or to expose information. Let's see like, uh, one of the things that I, uh, I recently did in my work is I, I had to implement like a dynamic payment gateway system, right? Super normal stuff. But the thing is like, for example, if, if, we, if we need to build this, this gateway out of an entity, you can have an entity uh, object that you, you really know what is the info that you're getting from there. So you are type hinting an object and you are working with a valid entity here. That you can do it in the constructor, so you can pretty much do whatever I did here out of an array, you can do it with an object. You can just build your object however you want. Or you can have it in whatever method you need you pass it in, just the, the, the aim for this, for this uh, implementation is just get rid of our primitive, right? That usually, how I used to do it, instead of having objects here, I used, used to have simple and plain arrays. And of course, an array can take everything. And if we have worked in PHP, we know how the mess can be, right? Okay, that's it. Okay, I have a, li a small, code example here. So this one is called object example, and this is called primitive example. If we see it here, the, the same information that is being exposed here. Increase the font size. Increase the font size. I don't know how to do that, you know? 
Common place. Common place. Okay. Better? Okay. So we have the primitive example, which is just built out of arrays and whatever. And we have our objects example. If you see here, we have like the same information. Of course, you will see like the information here is different. It's just because they, they have been built randomly. But uh, what is important is like we have it contains this string and it says yes. Should reject, it says no. And this one says yes. Uh, okay, this one says yes. I, we need to check. Maybe I have a bug. Okay? So just don't, 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 don't get overwhelmed uh, about this code. It's, they are just simple controllers that build data. So if we see this object controller, or the font size. Font size. Better? It's no PHP storm. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't paid for it yet. So we have this simple controller, it's called object controller, and this controller extends from this controller, right? This controller here just builds some item for me, right? Uh, it builds, if we have object controller, it, we call this guy called items that come from this controller here. And this controller is just creates a faker instance and just give me some object, okay? So we are, we have the same input here, which is the array, but we are, encapsulating my logic in the object. Why? Because, as we learned, objects are better. So if we have here in this controller, we are working with these items here from the controller, and we'll see, okay, that's the, the, the object, because this guy now is an object, it's not a, an array, right? So does this object has this string, uh, this index? If it does, it, it will tell you yes or no. This, this uh, logic that we see here, if it's working properly, it's the one that says here, right? It will depend, like, if this is the, this is the, the whole, the raw array, and you see, like, they have this index here, A, 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 and it says it contains A, and it says yes. So we are seeing that this logic here is working. We have this should reject, is, we are gonna go through the code in a bit. So it says, like, okay, if it's false, it's false. So it doesn't have, it will check whether it have CCC. So it will tell you here, this is the, the whole output, it tell, okay, can reject, the B value is B, uh -huh. so it will give you the, the information of B, which is, I don't know where this is, is here. So we have, we exposed in, in our public API in this items objects, we have this method being called. We have this doesn't have, we come from here, we check this object, also check whether if an e index exists or not, it also exposes a filter uh, ability in this object that we don't know how it works. It's, we just know that it can filter, and it can filter also A. So this is our object controller, right? So if we go to the primitive controller, this guy is being built from this uh, method is called raw. If we go to our controller here, it's just a plain array. It's just is the same information that has been built here. The only difference is like in the object, we are wrapping the information in an object, and here we are just getting the raw data, which is the primitive data. So you can, of course, type hint it. There is nothing bad about it, but it's better to type in an object since you are gonna get more flexibility here, right? So if we see the primitive code, we go about it like as we know, right? If you have worked with arrays, we check like whether we have that index, whether there is a count there, if it doesn't have it. So it contains, it said, it, it, it give me the value of the index B, and so on and so on. So we have this functionality here, we have this filter, but if we see here, this filter here is making reference to the same uh, uh, file. So which mean is the logic that filters this array is be, it live in this file. So this is something that I was telling you about. It's like if you have this logic in this file and, you, and then all of a sudden you need to use the same logic in three, four different files. 
that's when objects come come handy, right? So you have all your logic encapsulated, you unit test that object, and everywhere in your application where you use the object, you are good to go, right? So pretty much uh, this is a simple filter. And how these objects are being built, if you go here to the object uh, controller, uh, if I see it here, yes. So we have, uh, no, no, here, here, sorry. So if we have this item here, so this guy just takes us an array, right? So if we check this object, it's just a plain object. So we have a data information, we have a filter data that we use it for some reason. We are type hinting that we are depending on, on, a, on, on a uh, an array here to, to to be like what object, we check what is the should reject method. Well, based on this logic, it says, okay, if I don't have items in my array, okay, I should reject this information. Let's see if you are working with uh, users and this user needs to place an order. But you can say, you can have like a this user object, whatever information you are holding there, right? So you check, okay, does this user have an email? If it does, Okay, keep keep going. If he, if he doesn't have an email, you should reject this place order if we go back to the Lazada order because it doesn't make sense for an online user to place an order that who doesn't have an email, right? So we check whether it, it has, it has it poses the has method, which is checks just if the given array has a, a, an index there, but it's because this is a, a like simple example, you, you might see like it's super simple, but Again, you, this thing can, can grow exponentially as you want. Like, let's see if sometimes I have, have uh, the opportunity of, has, of do something like return here, and you check availability, right? And then I pass whatever info I need here. Why? Because sometimes our application will, will grow, right? Let's see if, uh, Again, I'm gonna give you another example of, of my, my daily days, right? So we, we have, uh, we sell bookings, right? So these bookings, they, they have an inventory, but this inventory can be a virtual inventory or can, he, or can be a physical inventory. So like this check availability will come handy here because this check availability will be like your bootstrapper in order for you to check an availability for a given bookie, booking and listing. So you can either go this way or you can just sit here and just write as much code as you want, but everything will be here, and you will, you're, you're, all of a sudden your application will be coupled to, to your logic. So the main point, the main point of all this subject is like you, you will write your code in such a way that it's easier to remove. That's all the aim of having all this information right here. If you write some code that can be removed, that is a really bad code. So the best code is the one that you can be that can be removed anytime. Uh, okay, so we have here, and this is the same the same logic that is filtering here. It's doing the filter. It's the same logic that uh, we have in this primitive uh, filter. So the only difference is like we have it encapsulating in these items that does something for us, and it will filter the information for us. Uh, yes, and. Uh, and yes, that's it. So any questions? I'm open. Any questions? No questions? Okay. All right, thank you.